We are journeying through the second week after Easter at the moment. And while there is so much loss that is being occasioned by the COVID-19 crisis, there are also opportunities. And one of those opportunities is to go deeper into prayer and to explore new ways of praying. So when I saw that coming up this week in the third week after Easter, we have for the gospel, the what is commonly known as the road to Emmaus story. I think that's a wonderful story to explore imaginatively. And it, so it reminded me of the time I had spent doing the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola many years back now. St. Ignatius was a 16th century Spanish saint whose very rich conversion experience had led to him founding the Jesuit order. He devised some spiritual exercises which are meant to take you through the whole of the gospel story to re-experience and actually live out the gospel stories from Jesus' birth to ascension. And the way he does that is by encouraging people to enter imaginatively into the stories. I, at that time, when I was doing these exercises, I didn't do them in 30 days. I did them across many months part-time. And I had a Jesuit mentor, a wonderful Jesuit mentor, um, who guided me to use my imagination and all of my senses to encounter Christ in the Gospels. And uh, in using our senses, that was coming into a, a little bit of conflict with a very um, cognitive view of scripture that I was currently um, working with. I was uh, in a community that was had a strong doctrinal focus at the time. And so I had to let go of some of the head trip and to explore all of my senses. And I found it led to a really um, rich awakening of my imaginative life and how your imaginative life can be a way into um, a richer spiritual communion with God. So I thought when we come to this story, let's go on an imaginative journey with it. Let's actually encounter, live it, breathe it, experience it with our eyes, our ears, um, our touch, and see where this story can take us. I invite you to reflect with me. A reading from the Gospel according to Luke. Now on that same day, Two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, 
Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Imagine now that you were one of those friends walking along the road. It's a long walk home from Jerusalem, but you're glad for the exertion. The physical work of walking might ease, just slightly, the harder work that's going on inside you today. It is the work of grief. You lost a friend just a few days ago. Not only a friend, but your leader, your beloved teacher. But he didn't simply die. He was executed in the most torturous, shameful way. You've seen a lot in your lifetime, but the memories of Jesus' ordeal are forever branded into your memory. You close your eyes and see blood. You go to sleep but dream about someone suspended, gasping for air. At least your friend is with you. Both of you followed the teacher with equal conviction and enthusiasm. So you bear your grief together now. As you walk and walk through the long rainy afternoon, you encourage better memories of all that the teacher said, of the people you know whom Jesus healed. You can't seem to stop talking, although several times one or both of you must stop talking because the emotion chokes you. The stranger joins you while you are still several miles from home. Within moments, it's clear that this person has no idea what has been going on in Jerusalem. With great heaviness and some annoyance, you fill in the barest details for him. All you have to say is crucifixion, and anyone in Roman territories knows exactly what you're talking about. But the stranger engages in the conversation with great energy. He must be some kind of teacher because he launches into an explanation of how Jesus' fate is actually a good thing and the proper fulfilment of what was predicted long ago. This is fascinating. You and your friend are all ears. Before you know it, you've arrived at your home and it's getting dark. You invite the stranger to have supper with you and spend the night rather than risk injury or other misfortune while on the night road at night alone. Also, you want to hear more of what he has to say, and you really don't want to let him go. The stranger graciously accepts your offer. The first thing you do upon entering the house is prepare the evening meal. The three of you sit down to eat. Then the stranger takes the bread and blesses it. You feel a strange energy move through you and hover in the room. Where have you heard this sort of blessing before? The stranger hands each of you a piece of bread. You take it and as you touch and smell the bread, memory washes over you of a hillside with thousands of hungry people, of a few loaves and fishes being transformed to a miraculous abundance. Suddenly it is clear who this man is eating at your table. You look into his face. What do you see? What is his expression? What do you feel? What do you know in the truth of your heart? Your friend has barely gotten the words out. Why, it's the Lord! when the stranger vanishes. The room still feels strangely warm and there is a sense of presence, like energy, like lightning. You and your friend stare at one another and finally you say, weren't our hearts on fire when he explained the scriptures? Didn't we know something even then? We just couldn't identify it. You finish your meal 
What a healing pleasure to eat the bread blessed by those hands. But then you look at each other and know what you must do. You head back to Jerusalem. You have to tell Jesus' other followers who are still there in the city. You need to take the journey back. What is your conversation like on the way back between you two? You are travelling at night, something you never do for safety's sake. What does it feel like to be on the road at such a strange hour? What thoughts keep running through your mind on this journey? How has your perspective changed now that you have met the resurrected Jesus? Jesus.